There's no written record of the exact origins of the Christmas stocking, but lots of Christian legends point to St. Nicholas as the inspiration for the holiday tradition. This happened because before being named the patron of children, Nicholas was known for his wealth and generosity. And as legend has it, Nicholas caught wind of a poor shopkeeper who worried his daughters would never marry because he couldn't afford a dairy. So one night, Nicholas crept into the family home and left bags of gold in the stockings, which may or may not have been left by the fire to dry, of each girl. And when they awoke the next morning, their worries were gone and their problem was solved. And of course, the legend of St. Nicholas is also the inspiration for St. Uh, jolly old St. Nick and Santa Claus, Father Christmas and all the equivalents around the world. Uh, some also say that having oranges in your stocking represents the gold that St. Nicholas gifted to the daughters. The Queen's speech, or the first royal speech, was broadcast in 1932 by King George V and it, he was the Queen's grandfather and it was a way for the royal family to connect with the people and many felt it a special connection listening to the King in their own living rooms. Uh, the tradition was continued by the Queen's father, King George VI, and subsequently after his death, uh, Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth. It was Prince Philip who thought it would be a perfect time to help modernise the royal family um, when the Queen's speech was televised for the very first time in 1957. Uh, each year she reflects on the year for both her and the country. Um, it's always at three o'clock at London time and you'll find many, many expatriates sitting down and watching um, in their own homes uh, to watch the Queen. Uh, my parents loved it as I do, but I do fear as each generation passes and the new royals emerge, it doesn't hold that same appeal as it used to, I, I don't think for the new, next generation anyway. Boxing Day. Uh, there's several theories as to how Boxing Day as a tradition became known. Some think it's tied to the use of the boxing of donations that were installed in churches during the pre-Christmas season of Advent um, and then on the day after Christmas 26th the boxes were opened and the money was distributed to the poor. Another theory tied to it is uh, starting around the 16th century, working class people who spent December the 26th seeking out Christmas boxes or tips from the people that they serve throughout the year. Another possible origin of the story um, was a tradition in Victorian England where the servants had sacrificed time with their own families to cater to their employees on Christmas. So on the day after Christmas, the employers would give the servants a very rare day off, send them home with leftovers from the family's Christmas, um, which was a feast, then plus gifts and tips. Um, and in their servants' absence, um, it was thought that the lords and the ladies or the aristocracy would uh, feast from leftovers. So uh, those are the different origins that have formed Boxing Day. I don't know which, I like the idea of it being for the poor, um, but I also like the idea of the poor servants getting their day off and having, you know, the left well, the leftovers from the aristocracy, but they're all really cool ideas. Twelfth night, or the 5th of January, has been celebrated as the end of the Christmas season since the Middle Ages. Uh, it's one of the most important days in the Christian calendar, and the twelfth night also marks when the three wise men came to Bethlehem to behold the Christ child. Um, the custom of offering gifts on the twelfth night, or the parties, um, was something that happened during the 18th and 19th century. The Twelfth Night parties were popular and usually involved games, playing, drinking and eating. Um, a special Twelfth Night cake 
which was the forerunner of today's Christmas cake, was the centrepiece of the party and given to all the members of the household. Um, traditionally, it was a massive party and inside the cake there would have been a bean for the man to find, he would be king of Misrule, and a pea for the lady to find and she would be the queen of Misrule. Once they had these and the roles were established, they wore the crown and they had power over everyone for that evening, even the actual lords and ladies. So it was something that everyone participated in and it was great feasting and it was fun to have everything sort of switched around and upside down. Uh, I think thus uh, been written about uh, by Shakespeare and others and still celebrated. Specifically in Europe and France, they celebrate the Epiphany with the King Cake and it is uh, always has been a very uh, big celebration there.